Coming up on this episode of Don't Panic, we've got technology news from around the country, including Apple deciding to stick with software. Smart idea. We'll also talk about uh, no one wanting Twitter. How sad. Um, and Music Plus versus Music Unlimited and what you need to know. It's a jam-packed episode of Don't Panic, and it's going to start for you right now. This is Don't Panic, episode number 145, recorded October 17th, 2016, on Project Titan, Worthless Twitter, and Grocery Prime. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, and you. I'm Sean Jennings, joined by one guy whose birthday it is not today, and another guy whose birthday it is today. It's Colby <laughs> Revenue and Dan Miller. You get to pick oh, whose <laughs> birthday it is. I was going to say, should we put out a poll to the audience about who uh, they get to decide whose birthday it is? No, it's, Dan, so. <laughs> it's Dan's birthday today. Congratulations, Yay. Dan. Thanks, I did it. I made it you, one more year. We weren't sure if it was going to happen, but darn it, you proved there, us wrong. There were close calls. <laughs> there were close calls, but in the end, <laughs> you just squeezed it out. Well, that's good. Yeah. 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 Now, do you... Uh, well, I know you've had a busy time at work, but at work, do they do like something for your for birthdays, or do you, are you the kind of guy who likes to keep it under the radar? Uh, so, funny story... It was, again, a sort of crazy day, so I went up with my only remaining team member. I, I asked if we wanted to go on the roof because it was such a nice day. We have this roof, and there was no one up there. And he was like, oh, okay, sure. So we went up, and uh, we were working from the roof, and then suddenly the rest of the, my old team shows up with beer, and it turns out that was the plan the, the entire time, and I preempted him and brought him up to the roof. I sort of did the opposite of what I was supposed to do. But, yeah, so there are no, there are no traditions Birthdays are typically celebrated, though, whether or not you want them to. But nothing embarrassing. No, oh, no, of course not. But, you know, beers and rooftops and... Right. Very Brooklyn of you. That's yeah, we I have say. the best rooftop bar in Brooklyn. <laughs> I can sure. confirm that. Yeah. Very nice. And, Colby, how was your not birthday? Very regular? Uh, Yeah, it was regular. I went to Rhode Island for a little bit. <laughs> you just popped over? Pretty much, Jill was going to Connecticut, and I didn't want to drive all the way to Connecticut, so I just uh, got off, like, halfway. <laughs> I just imagine Colby, like, opening the door and jumping out of a moving car. Later! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it really good. doesn't like Connecticut. Oh, I got a new phone. That's right! You got your, your iPhone yeah. 7. Congrats. I, I, I also got the Jet Black iPhone 7. Oh, cool. Um, I was forced to go to the Apple store because I wanted to sign up for the upgrade program. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it took so long. Oh, my God. It took an hour and a half. Oh, my God. Um, what was that? 15 minutes of that was like waiting for a person, which was fine. I was fine with. But then everything else just took forever. And like, I so a cool thing that happened is I traded in they pho my phone, my other phone, and they gave me $200 for it, which I was not expecting. I would just assume because it was Apple, it'd be like, oh, we'll recycle your phone for no money. Um, but they gave me $200, which was cool. And so so I used that to like pay for my case, and then the rest got refunded to my credit card. Um, but then I was giving them my phone, so I was like, I, I guess I'll like, I guess I'll do the restore here. Um because they asked if you want help like setting up your phone, and I was like, I don't, mm -hmm. but I guess I'll do it. Um, and it ended up like what it had to run a sauce. What was the thought process there, Colby? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thought process there was like I had to delete my phone, like I have to give them my old phone, so so I was going to be like, you know, for some amount of time have no phone at all. Ah, um, but then it like, sense. but then to do the. You know, it had it I, out of the box. It has like iOS 10.0.0, and like my my other phone was upgraded to 10.0.2. So version, yep. right. So so to like do the restore, it had to like do the software update, which takes forever. And so I I was just sitting in the store waiting for this thing to go, uh, which was irritating. And then like they had to do the whole thing with the carrier where they switch your SIM, but like. They didn't. I don't understand why they didn't just take my SIM card out and put it in the new phone. Uh, that that was weird, because because that would have taken seconds and and it took. 15 yeah, that's what I do. Do it the other way. Yeah. 
Um, so in any case, I will be avoiding the Apple Store at all costs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. I, I was getting really... The, the guy was very nice, and he was helpful, and, and it wasn't like a bad experience. It was just way longer than I was expecting it to be. But now I have a new phone. It's, it's nice. You say it's fast. It is. It's it's much faster than the old one at doing phone things, um, noticeably so. So uh, that's that's pretty nice. I also like force touching things. Okay, yeah, that's not appropriate, fun. Colby. You can't do that. <laughs> you got to ask permission first. It's you just can't. locker room talk. It's just John. locker room. <laughs> there you go. Yep. <laughs> The, the question of the day at Queen's Comfort this weekend, which is this cool brunch place, was what is your favorite orange thing? And, of course, we answered Donald Trump. It was, what was your favorite or least favorite orange thing, which is why we answered Donald Trump. Don, Donald Trump is a pretty hilarious spoonerism. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, yeah. In other news, the the Slack bot crashed. Oh. For some reason, it crashes every time I I like add a pic. I don't understand. <laughs> oh no! I'm Just restarting you. it. I'm. It's happened to me twice, and I don't think it's happened to anyone else. <laughs> it's it's rebelling against its creator. <laughs> this is like some Westworld shit going on in here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the referees. Could you imagine if our Slack? <laughs> If the Slack bot went that far, like it just started as a Slack bot for the show rundown. And yeah, we got a whole theme park on our hands. <laughs> rundown bot. Have you watched it, John? No, I have not. I don't have HBO. I don't have HBO. I'm too cheap. Sorry. Unbelievable. I know. It is shame on me. And actually, to be honest, I do think that's the kind of thing. And again, as I, I think I, I don't know if I said this on this show or on Up for Debate, but. Um, the problem with shows like Westworld is if I don't, it will get to a certain point where there are enough episodes where I'll just say I'll never watch it. Like, if I don't start at the beginning, right? you know, like uh, Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones and a lot of these, like, big, long drama shows that run a long time, if I don't start, like, within the first season or two, I'm done. I'm not. There's just too much. Like, Game of Thrones. I'm never going to watch it. There's just too much of it, and it's complicated. Breaking Bad, I only got through, like, three seasons of, so... Aren't there only four seasons, or are there five There's seasons? five. There's five. Okay. But I just get... I have to, Mad Men was great, because I got in early, and then I just watched it as the new ones came out. Yeah, but so you could be doing this... That's, but that's what I'm saying. I Westworld. have to do that for Westworld. So you're not I, a binger, it sounds like. Not for really complicated, hour-long shows where, you, where it's like really intense and heavy, because then I just get bogged down, and then it's like, that's okay, I'm done. I can't mm. do this anymore. Bad enough. That's fair. Mm. Uh, so, so the reason I looked exasperated there was not because of Sean's TV habits, <laughs> uh, but it Although was that because, is frequently the reason I looked exasperated. Yeah, it, it was because I restarted the the Slack bot and all the data is gone now. <laughs> <laughs> and you forgot about persistence. I don't know. It, it persists. Uh, I just don't know. Something happens when it crashes and everything goes away. <laughs> Disaster. The good news is we uh, we have the analog backup in the, in the, Thank in God. the actual rundown. Thank God. I don't trust the machines. <laughs> well, this is an audit log, as they say in the business, Sean, so you can rebuild the database from the transactions. Sure. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like a thing. Uh, very good. Uh, anything else going on? Uh, so it's weirdly warm this week. What is happening? Yeah, I had to. I turned the AC on. It's crazy. Ninety degrees out, sunny, beautiful. You guys must know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I rode my it bike to work. Eighty degrees out today. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. You can't beat that. Yeah, yeah. It's not often eighty degrees on my birthday. Sometimes I, it's fifteen degrees on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I got like this weekend I got like a foul weather bike bike shirt jacket thing to to wear when it's cold and and it was too warm to wear it today. <laughs> I was uh, I was recalling to somebody the other day the famous um Marist Halloween October snowstorm that we had mm. when was that junior year? That was fun. Where yep. where everyone was in their skimpy 
you know, outfits and, uh, you know, and heels trying to go through about, what, six, eight inches of snow. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Yep. I just sat, we just sat and watched it happen because we were in the middle. F- no, no, no. I guess we were in upper full tent. Was it junior year or was it senior year? I'm pretty sure it was junior. It was. Okay. Yeah. There was yeah. another time when it snowed. And it was like pretty early in the season, and we were in that house that was in like the directly on the path towards the shuttle buses on the the upper uh, class side of campus. Isn't that Mid Fulton? Yes, yes, that's what I said. You're right. So we could just like watch these people parade by and slide all over the place and ruin their clothes. It was great. Nice. But yeah, other than that, nothing's nothing crazy has happened. Well, that's good. We'll we'll keep it that way. Uh, I do want to mention some crazy stuff happened in the world of technology. Oh my God, there's so much to talk about. Before we get to that, though, we got a couple things we got to do first, which is one, we are live right now on Facebook at facebook.com slash don't panic show. We do it Monday nights at roughly 10 p.m. Eastern. We were a little late today because Skype is annoying, uh, but for the most part, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central. Uh, if you comment live, we'll take a look. We have our first Facebook comment. You guys want to hear it? Yep. It is a controversial opinion, all right, but I think it's worth discussing. Michael Kurtz says, happy birthday, Mandiller. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> Thanks, Mike. A very nice comment there. Uh, so make sure you go to uh, facebook.com slash don't panic show. Uh, if you're watching live, you're already there, and you can comment, and we'll read it on the show. Now, um, a couple Don't make things. that promise. We might... Yes. Comment on it. Read it on the show. At our discretion. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there was two quick news stories I wanted to mention. They didn't make it in the rundown, but they, they, they're not like big news stories, but they relate to the show. One, Facebook announced this week that you can now play Facebook videos, um, obviously via AirPlay on Apple TV, but you can also uh, cast it via Google to your Chromecast or Cast-enabled devices. What that means is you can watch this show live and recorded on Facebook on your big screen TV. Or if you don't have a big screen TV, Or your regular size TV, yes. (laughs) Or on your phone already. You don't even have to cast it. But if you have that ability, and what's great is um, for live video, you can see the comments right on the screen as you're watching it. So it's pretty cool way to uh to enjoy the show on your big screen so if you're watching on facebook just know uh use your device to either airplay or google cast it the other story i wanted to mention was that uh, periscope you may know them as the live streaming uh platform owned by twitter they announced this week a new service called uh periscope producer uh, which is going to allow people to patch into the periscope network without having to do it via the app what that means is hopefully within the next couple of weeks, this show will be live on Periscope, which is pretty oh, exciting. I'm trying to figure out how to get that up and running. It's a limited kind of beta thing, so you have to apply to get in. So I'm going to see if we can get in. Mm-hmm. But it's exciting. Keep an eye out for that. We are, I made an account, so we're on Periscope. We don't panic show. Um, and so you can follow Sweet. us there. So would we be streaming live on Periscope and Facebook? That's the or... other thing I have to figure out. I believe we can do both. That sounds like the the best case scenario, and and that's what I would like. I would like to have as on to be honest as an, on a, as many platforms as possible, uh, but I also mm-hmm. haven't ever tried it. Um, yeah, I imagine that we'd use double the bandwidth. Um, I don't know enough about computers to. Tell you. <laughs> I really have to be honest. Yeah. I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, I'm pretty, yeah, I that will use double the bandwidth. But yeah, it's not going through a central place elsewhere. Right. It's going directly to both platforms. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see. Maybe your yes. maybe your fancy Texas internet can handle it. I'll let you know. <laughs> I pay. I paid extra for more uh, uh for more uh, up with. <laughs> more up everything's is and here everything's <laughs> bigger in texas does that include the tubes <laughs> no actually they're not and i have a data cap so oh no no i'm supposed to i have unlimited because i have cable if i didn't have cable yeah i do actually have a data cap we'd be we'd Some be very sd if that were the case okay i just want to mention those things so there's always new and innovative ways to check out this program and we will let you know as that changes now we do have some tech news in here. It was a very light week for news. I got to be straight with you guys. Not a heck of a lot going on in terms of news. But there were a few things. 
And uh, if there's something you don't see here you want to talk about, we can do that too. But I don't know where you guys want to start. we got uh, Apple's Project Titan. We've got uh, Twitter's Lack of Interest. We've got Music Unlimited and Music Plus. We've got Amazon Grocery Stores. Samsung's Exploding in Your Face. You got Samsung Face Explosions. Has to, yeah. Let's you want to start right there? there. Well, yeah. so it's amazing. You know, this is one of those rare stories. We talked about this kind of almost in depth last week and yet there is still a lot more to talk about it because it is changing and things are happening so rapidly so just in the last week since we recorded the last episode um samsung admitted that they're going to dispose of the recalled phones they're not going to try and fix them thank god um they announced that they're going to offer up to a hundred dollar credit to incentivize people to return their phones they're mailing out fire and explosion proof return boxes for people to put them in to send them back. Um, and now they have been banned from all U.S. flights. It is a federal crime to bring one on a plane, and it could levy a fine for as much as $179,000 for each <laughs> violation. Wow. Yeah. Samsung, um, uh, lastly, expects to lose an additional $3 billion because of this recall. Three billion dollars uh i don't i'm having trouble i don't think you mentioned this but the uh, that uh, i thought that other link you you and put it yes they disabled the vr phone because of course in the galaxy vr you put your note in the headset and you, you know you do virtual reality stuff they turn that feature off so it, if you put it in nothing will happen which as soon as i saw that story i'm like i cannot think of a more terrifying <laughs> Then a phone strapped to your face, pointed at your eyeballs, that will Exploding. burst into flames and explode. <laughs> yep. Hey, that sounds horrible. So basically things are not going great for... It'd be so immersive, though. <laughs> Could you imagine? In, immersed in fire. <laughs> put, put out an app, the, the, uh, the burning down the house VR app, and it's, wow, <laughs> these flames, it's like they're right in front of my face. They're so hot. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good to be Samsung. So, I don't know what uh, what angle you guys want to take on this. I was thinking, I saw somebody on Twitter posted that they were at a, an airline gate waiting to get on their plane, and there were constant announcements at their gate and throughout the airport telling people to not bring their Samsung notes on the plane. So, yeah, so, this so happened to me. So okay. they've escalated to like, from don't turn it on to oh, yeah. don't don't bring it on the plane. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, when I was flying back from Boston two weeks ago, they told us not, they had the not don't turn it on, but they specifically said Samsung Galaxy Note Seven, do not turn it on. So, wow. They're like the FAA strongly like suggests that you do not turn it on. Yeah, and I've yeah. I've read on Twitter about people just not being allowed on their flights because they won't leave the phone behind. Um, they're, they're really, no, they're really serious. And so what I was thinking was, A, um, well, actually, just one point, which was I can't think of a more brand-damaging event than having an airport constantly announce, do not use this company's <laughs> products. They are so yeah. dangerous, we will not let them on our airplanes. Right. right. And, and I, I also feel like there are going to be like people who never return it, too. So like they're going to have to do this indefinitely. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, and I, I didn't see any, I'm going to try and look and see if there's any numbers on how many they sold prior to mm. um, stopping sales. What, well, what is, there's not a gate for this yet? Is it burn gate? Like, what's the gate? Samsung? Explode gate? gate? Note gate? Note gate? It, it's note gate? Or uh, is it? Or are we just making these up? No, I'm, I'm just surprised. These up. I, haven't I haven't heard of a gate. I haven't either. I don't think so either. You know what? Maybe because it's a because um, it's a Korean company, they don't use gate over there. Maybe there's like a different. But this is all. <laughs> I'm just... You're kidding, right? Yes, I'm kidding. Yes, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, I have not like Apple self. You know, you, you know, what we're gonna call this manufacturing defect with a bendingness. Bend gate. Bend gate. <laughs> antenna gate. You know, we've we've seen them all. Yeah, no, I, I like I like um, blow up gate. Blow. <laughs> Grenade gate. Grenade. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I have. I have no idea. Whatever it is, it's not good. No. Mm-hmm. Really not good. Um. And then I saw today already rumors about what the Note Eight will be. 
Oh, really? Number one feature, not exploding. <laughs> uh, unsurprisingly. So, <laughs> I don't know. Is is there anything to say on this other than it sucks? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's pretty rough for them. The bummer. Yeah. I, yeah. I just can't think <laughs> of another parallel in consumer electronics. Like, like, name another time a consumer electronic product was so dangerous <laughs> in an unexpected way that they had to stop sales, write off at least $3 billion, permanently ban it from all airlines. The uh, George I mean... Sr.'s corn baller in Arrested Development. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A plus yeah. for reference. I mean, I feel like there were lots of consumer things that were really dangerous, but didn't work, weren't recalled for years, like everything <laughs> with lead in it. And I mean, that's fair. Yes. That's, um, the, the Xbox 360 ring of death yeah, that's thing. A good, that's a good parallel. Mm. That, and that was years. Of course, yeah. they didn't explode. <laughs> no. True, they did not explode. I just... You know, there was an interesting article that, um, I forget, I wish I knew the source, but um, most phone companies have outside, uh, like, regulatory groups look at their batteries before they ship them to, to look at them and approve. Samsung does all of theirs in-house, mm. which amazed me. There, nobody, they didn't have any kind of verification that, right, they, no, no one right. double-checked before they sent it out. Gotta get a second opinion. And I think if there is a bright spot out of this, which there aren't many, um, it's that, you know, there are legitimate problems with the way phones are certified safely and the way that they're recalled in the event of an issue. Um, I think we've discovered a lot of flaws in the system, and that's usually how they get fixed is when something bad happens, sadly. Um, right. you know, thankfully, nobody got hurt, seriously. But um, but hopefully, if anything comes of it, We'll have, we'll have a better process by which these phones are actually reviewed and looked at. And then, again, with the recall, there was all kinds of issues. Initially, with the recall, the government was slow to put it out, and then they did only a partial one. And It's not good for consumers. Yep. And Rough then, stuff. As, as, as our number one listener, Michael Kurtz, says on Facebook, <laughs> perfect time for the Google Pixel, and I couldn't agree more. Um, it's perfect time for anyone who is a, a competitor of Samsung. Yeah, but has I have seen Google Pixel ads in New York, but I see ads for everything in New York, including <laughs> those stupid Twitter ads in the subway. Have you seen pictures of these? It's yeah. just like the Twitter color scheme with an exclamation point or an like that's the one that really gets me because an at symbol or a hashtag at least has some association with Twitter. So if you're just gonna like walk through a turnstile and see like a white on blue hashtag, you might know what that means. But the exclamation point one, like, <laughs> that could be anything. Exactly. Anyways, so hopefully Google's marketing is effective for the Pixel so people know to buy it. Like, what are the other phones? Does uh, Are droids still a thing that people buy? Well, I, the, well, like the Moto X and the Moto G, I think, are still things. Whatever the new versions of those are, HTC. Mm. They still make Moto Xs? They do. They do. I haven't heard anything about them. Uh, well, because they're just kind of the same all the time. They don't kind of blow it out with the, with new features. Um, there's HTC, I believe, still makes Android phones, right? LG does. LG does. They still have phones. Windows Phone, maybe now's the time. I mean, I'm just Nokia. <laughs> I'm just Lumia. That's the right. Lumia 970. Come on, people uh -huh. love the Lumia. I don't no. know. I no. don't think okay. so. BlackBerry. They just announced they're stopping making phones too too soon, guys. Come on, <laughs> terrible just timing. Could have just hold in a little longer. Firefox OS. Oh wait, they just continued that. The Amazon mm -hmm. Fire Phone. No, mm -hmm. nobody. But there's Man. a warehouse of those somewhere, collecting dust. <laughs> Now's the perfect time, guys. Right, right. They could just send one to everyone who had it. <laughs> just for free. Honestly, honestly, it would not surprise me if Amazon did something. Like, we're just going to give them away for free and assume we make enough back and people who buy crap on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, oh, delightful. Yeah. Well, sorry, Samsung. Better luck next time. <laughs> About all you can say. All right.
Mm-hmm. We'll continue on to another story well, here. Speaking of Twitter, we can talk about the Twitter story now that they have such fantastic subway ads in New York. Mm, okay, well, they're clearly not very effective. Someone uh, someone online wrote Maybe that. Maybe that's what they're advertising. They're it, advertising the sale of their own company. It's well, on the... The subway. <laughs> they, were, uh, they were posted pretty aggressively in whatever the Wall Street station is. Uh, someone, <laughs> someone posted. They said right front Some center. Some hedge fund manager, please. Just Any, call me uh, just a couple million. That's all we need. Please, sir. Um, yes. It would appear as though Twitter doesn't have any bidders. We've talked about this on the show. I don't know if it was last week or the week before that. Twitter had, had kind of unofficially put itself up for sale and was soliciting offers. Um the companies we talked about, Google this, Google announced they were not going to bid. Disney announced they were not going to bid. Salesforce was kind of the last uh, horse in the race announced they were not going to bid as well. Um, Facebook has uh, said to be uninterested. Um, people don't think Microsoft will do it. Apple is likely out, and Verizon immediately uh, dismissed that they were involved. Simply put, nobody at this point with $12 billion is interesting in purchasing Twitter. Now, interestingly enough, I did read this just before we got on. Uh, Bloomberg had an article about why Disney didn't bid, and part of the reason, Disney actually had like pulled in legit bankers to crunch numbers, took a presentation from Twitter. They were afraid that the sort of, um, how should I put it, unsavory side of Twitter um, mm. would look would mm. reflect poorly on their family brand. Um, and that was, that was a problem they didn't want to have. Yeah, Disney's not about that life. No. <laughs> that thug life yes exactly i agree um and we all know how twitter does a not super great job at monitoring things like that yeah not doing that job at all oh yeah or that you know <laughs> i was gonna be a little more political about it but you're like yeah they just don't do it <laughs> yeah that's fair yeah uh interesting i think that makes a a lot of sense for for disney like one I don't know. I'm sure the next the next big terrible thing that happens on Twitter is is coming. I don't know. Today, tomorrow, oh. next week. I think every day something terrible happens on Twitter. You can't, <laughs> right, right. You can't avoid too much of it. True. Um so uh, this is a question I've tried to get the answer to before. And I still don't quite understand. But, like, what makes Twitter worth $12 billion? Well, clearly it's not I, worth I was about to, <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Yes, that is exactly part of it, um, is that they, they are a bit overvalued. Twitter is not, I believe, profitable at the moment. Mm. I don't think they're, like, crazy unprofitable. Yeah. I'm trying to look up right now what their... Um, Oh, so Twitter has a it. lot of viewers, right? Mm. So it's users. Well, we've talked about this one. WhatsApp was acquired and Instagram was acquired. You're paying for users, not a platform. Right. And so right. they're a so, couple hundred, I think, what, 500 million? Maybe they're not quite that high. 300 million? Right in there is where their user base is. Right. And and so I, I think this is a thing that I've heard or read or something, but, but isn't, like, the amount of investment you've taken like doesn't that contribute to your does that contribute to your company's worth worth because like you took the money so it's like oh it must be worth that much because you uh, well yeah uh, i mean that is a reflection of what your value is in the marketplace okay you know if colby's willing to invest in my company for at a 12 billion dollar valuation well then i guess my company's worth 12 billion dollars well okay all right just come on (laughs) Even in my hypothetical, you wouldn't do it. <laughs> well, I mean, if if all, I I can't imagine a world where I had twelve billion dollars. Never mind more than twelve billion dollars. Uh, so so. <laughs> it's a lot. Of I don't money. know. I it, do, I don't think I would invest every penny I had in 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 Sean Jennings Incorporated. So, uh, I'm gonna let that wow, one slide. Harsh. So, so <laughs> let me let me give you a piece of information here. Um, in the three months ending. On June 30th, so that would be June, May, and April, Twitter uh, brought in revenue of $600 million. But in that same period, their um, their EBITDA was a negative 107. So they 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 lost a, a roughly 107 uh, pre-tax. 
EBITDA, I know what that means. EB- what does it? Do you remember? I, earnings, even, I even forget sometimes. Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Our wow. CFO makes us repeat this like a cult at every company all hands. Mm-hmm. I think you just earned your MBA today. I think that's, that's literally <laughs> yeah. all you need to know when you're a business yeah. person. You, all, yeah, but you that say that is. to someone who doesn't know, like, oh, EBITDA. And they're like, oh, it's, it's exotic. It's like, throw, I don't know what it's like. It's like throwing around a technical term to someone who doesn't know programming for for finance, for finance. Except I don't actually know any finance at all. All I know is what EBITDA But that's all you is. need to know. That That's basically right. my company. I just want to really understand the implications of all those words, just that <laughs> it's a thing you care about. We have people for that, Dan. Don't worry about it. Um. Yeah, so I mean they're they're losing money, not like a, an insane amount of money, but um but they have users and I you know the problem is twelve billion dollars is a lot of money and there aren't a lot of companies out there who can pay that. And and we've talked we talked what was this a week or two ago about all the potential options and very few of them made sense because Twitter is such a unique it's a tube. It, it, the internet is a Twitter is a series of tubes. They don't own anything. They're just a place where people talk about stuff. <laughs> and that does have a value, but only so much value. Um, Twitter's also had a long-term problem with um, um, active users versus just users. Um, Twitter's numbers historically have been very low on how many people visit it every day or often or, you know, they have a lot of users, but they don't have a ton of people who are like really engaged. That's WhatsApp had a ton of active users. Obviously, it's a mm-hmm. chat app and just kind of the nature of it, you know, leads to that. But um, but Twitter's always struggled with that and you need active users to make ad revenue and things of that nature. It's just a weird company. It's just a weird. Honestly, I what I think is I think we should all pitch into a GoFundMe. And just buy it in the public interest, and enshrine <laughs> it like the Library of Congress. A go a twelve billion dollar go GoFundMe. Fund yeah, sure, why not? I've seen stupider ones. I mean, and that way, <laughs> and that way, it becomes a national, the national place of discourse. <laughs> I'm just saying, like nobody owns the, the C-span of the internet. Yes, thank you, Dan. Thank you. Buy You're the welcome. people for the people. Twitter.com. <laughs> well, Sean, I don't think that's going to happen. No, and nobody ever listens to me. They I hate to should. tell you. That's okay. I've had many ideas shut down, so not the first time. But um, do you guys think any of the companies we've discussed should change their mind, or did they all make the right decision? I think I think Disney should buy it and then say, like, okay, now it's our rules. Now Twitter, like, you don't... You, posting Twitter is not a right. Uh, we're going to make it much harder to, you know, sign up and to uh, to turn it into a place of actual discourse and not just like trolling, shit posting, and spam booby lady accounts, which is the only people that follow me on Twitter. That's what it is. And then, I've like, never heard you it get... described that way. <laughs> oh yeah, because the profile pictures are just that. Like that's like, you can just tell just in the profile picture. Dan, I <laughs> and then oftentimes, the... by the time I get the notification, look, account's already gone, which is <laughs> good. But like, right? Yeah. Dan, I don't hang out in the corners of Twitter. You do, so I don't know what you're talking about. But um... <laughs> bless you. Maybe bless all you. these people do want to uh, marry me from Bulgaria or whatever, but I doubt it. Oh, should I should I tell you my uh, the embarrassing Twitter thing with me? Yeah, I know I really shouldn't. I <laughs> I will say very simply that there is another Sean Jennings who spells his name the exact same way, um, who is a gentleman who does certain adult things as a career, <laughs> and his users sometimes tweet at me um, by mistake <laughs> because his username is very close to mine, and oh, no. um, every once in a while I will get. Very inappropriate things tweeted at me. I'll leave it at that. But I <laughs> wow. completely agree same, with you. It's spelled the same exact uh, way? Yes, which is rare. Which is rare. I've only, I only know of, outside of him, one other guy um, who's in an Australian rock band. Um, who has that <laughs> name as well. His followers used to tweet at me, too, and get mad that I owned at Sean Jennings. Why don't you just give it to our Sean Jennings? And I'm like, I had it first. This is the likely lead. <laughs> <laughs> 
I got squatters rights. I, basically, that's what it was. I'm like, I, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> get over wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. Are you sure? Are you sure it's not this guy, Sean? Oh boy, I'm scared of what you're sending me. No, it's not. No, it's not that guy. I'll put this it's up on the screen Minecrafter? For, for those of you watching uh, the YouTube version. <laughs> Um, no, it is not. It is not the Minecrafter, Dan. Just for you, I'll send you the link when we're not on the show. I promise. Ah, uh, um, later because I don't I, panic after dark. Don't panic after dark. <laughs> this is a family show. This is people watch this with their kids. They like like the old like the radio of old days. They all sit around the uh, the virtual uh, fireplace and listen to this program. Um, all right. Well, I don't know what's gonna happen to Twitter. I Dan, I think. Disney buying Twitter is interesting. I don't know what it does for Disney. Yeah, I haven't thought that far ahead. <laughs> I stand by. I still think it's a, it would be a good idea for Google to buy them. Because I think Google needs a single social thread that connects all of their products. And Google <laughs> Plus was a good idea with a bad execution. And I feel like buying Twitter gets them users on day one, which is something Google Plus never had. And you integrate it through everything they do. You plug in Google's ad network. Mm -hmm. Bam, you're printing money. And and then you're integrating like Twitter crappiness with YouTube comment crappiness. It's it's really like like perfect synergy. Oh my god, that'd be <laughs> that'd be such a shit show. I'd love to see that. It would never such work. Synergy. They still haven't gotten Google Plus right. Never mind buying Twitter and trying to smash it together with their existing stuff. I don't know. Hopefully something ha I like Twitter. Actually, I love Twitter. I spend more time on Twitter than any other app on my phone. So it would sadden me greatly to see them go away. Mm -hmm. Can All we right. talk about music now? We, oh my god, can we? Colby, are you an unlimited guy, or are you a plus guy? Uh, <laughs> it's a tough question. I, I, I guess unlimited in the abstract. In reality, it's unclear. Well, here we go. I'll give you the chance to make up your mind, because we had two big music service announcements this week, starting with Amazon. They announced Amazon Music Unlimited which is uh, in similar to Spotify and Google Play Music, where you know they have all the major labels. And for $7.99 a month um, or $79 a year, you can stream all the music you would like. Um, they say tens of millions of songs, whatever that means. They have the recommendation engine, and they have handmade playlists, and they have apps on all the different platforms, um, etc. Now, uh, an interesting thing, like I said, $7.99, but if you have an Echo Speaker... Already, it is three ninety nine. So if you if you have Alexa in your home, it is just three ninety nine a month. You get a discount there. Um, non Prime members, it'll cost them nine ninety nine a month. So the seven ninety nine is as a Prime member. Um, it'll be available on PC, tablets, all your mobile devices, on Echo, obviously, on Amazon Fire TV. Um, and there you go. Now, what's interesting is they already have Prime Music. So if you're a Prime subscriber, you may be thinking to yourself, wait, don't I already have access to stream all the Prime Music I want? It's, uh, they say it's a much more limited library. Um, and it will continue to stick around as well. All right. Now you hey, I, I have no desire for additional music streaming apps, but I do know people who refuse to get Music streaming because they already have it with Amazon, Amazon Prime. It's not. It's not great. And they're Prime. wrong. Yeah. No, it sucks. The app is bad. The selection is bad, and they mm. should feel bad. I <laughs> couldn't agree more, Dan. It is. But weak. maybe they will pony up. Like, do you do you get a discount if you already have Prime, or only if you have Alexa? So it's nine ninety nine without Prime, seven ninety nine with Prime, three ninety nine okay. with Prime and Alexa. So maybe they'll pony up. I suspect not, though. I think I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, well, of course, it's $3.99 because I do have my speaker. But uh, I do actually use the majority of the music. Well, it's interesting. The majority of the music I play is either through my Echo speaker or is on the Pandora app because I just like Pandora a lot. Um, so I'll probably, for $3.99, I'll probably try it. But you're right. I mean, it's at what point did we become saturated with music services? You know, it's kind of like all yeah, these like, video services are having the same problem with Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and uh, CBS and 
Right. Oh my god, I always forget about Amazon streaming. There are a couple of shows I actually like to watch on there too. Who knows if they're out again? Uh, uh, man, did you, and, man, the High Castle, the new season's coming, right? November, uh, December, soon, December. I think. I think it's I'm, December. I'm, I'm looking forward to Mozart in the Jungle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've got a lot of quality stuff. I'm told. Oh, the the Grand Tour, which is the Top Gear guys, their show's coming out next month. That's going to be awesome. Mm. Now, of course, you can contrast Amazon Music Unlimited with Pandora Plus, um, which Pandora announced. It's it's the mid tier. Um, oh my god, this is so complicated. So I'll try and make it simple because I don't understand it. They have a lot of options here now for Pandora. So there's still free Pandora, which has ads and limited skips. Okay. Then there is Pandora Plus, which is four ninety nine a month. Um you will be able to uh, skip songs, have offline listening, have more replays, um, and it's ad-free, four ninety nine a month. Then they're saying later this year they're going to have a completely on-demand service like Prime Unlimited, Music Unlimited, and Spotify and all these services. That's coming later this year. They haven't said how much it'll cost or any of the details. Hmm. So there you go. So, well, do, are there still ads in the four ninety nine version? It is ad free. Oh, okay. It's ad free. You used to have. See now, that's the one thing is I don't remember what they used to have. I remember the they, Pandora One. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I used to right. subscribe to. I think it was more expensive. Let me see. Really? If I can find. I remember that. it being like thirty dollars for the for a year or something. Maybe not. Oh no, that. it was four ninety nine a month. Oh. Or fifty four eighty nine a year, which I don't know what that comes out to, but um, so yeah, so it's the same. I think they just renamed it. I think you get no. I don't know what they changed. Okay, now I'm all right. Hang on, let me. All right, I'm gonna read some stuff here because now I'm just confused. It's madness. It, yeah, it's crazy. What are, I don't know what they're. Yeah. Uh, Dan Miller, do you use Spotify still, or did you end up Apple Musicing? Uh, I use like seventy-five percent Apple Music, twenty-five percent Spotify. I should really just only use one. Yeah. And I was holding out for like the new Apple Music redesign, and it's nicer, but it doesn't really change anything. So I should really just. But then I I keep forgetting to cancel the Apple Music subscription, so I, it keeps renewing, and I'm like, oh. Well, I guess I just renewed for another three months, so I might as well use it. Dan, yeah. I will yes. make you a deal. Okay. I will give you $5 cash money if you can cancel your Apple Music subscription without Googling how to do it in under 60 seconds. Okay. Uh, it's really hard to do. All right. Challenge accepted. But instead of giving me $5, you have to pay $10 and watch Westworld and then cancel your okay, HBO deal. Now subscription. Okay, deal. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. All right, here we go. All right. I'm watching I, the I might be, yeah. I might be cheating because I'm pretty sure I remember how to do this. Oh, okay. But we'll see. Maybe 60 <laughs> seconds was too generous. That might have been my I don't mistake. Know. I don't even know where to start. Uh, I do remember having, having going on quite quite the uh, oh, the it's, adventure. It's trying the to most find hidden it. menu. Uh oh, Sean. Uh oh. Oh, you found it. Took you thirty seconds. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Dang. All right, I watch Westworld. You got me. I, I, the first time I did it, it's buried. It's like eighteen menus in. All no right. checkbox anymore. All right. Well, I'm really looking forward to Westworld. It's gonna be great. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Yes, yes, you win. You win. Um, I did get. I think I got. Yeah, I had definitely done that before. That's okay. I just needed an excuse to justify my purchase of HBO. So, thank you for giving me validation. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. What's interesting is um, if you have Amazon Music Unlimited and you have an Echo device. You can say um, more kind of detailed requests. So you can say things like play you two songs from the 80s. Or you can even ask for lyrics. You can even say play the song that goes like and then actually say the lyrics and they'll find you the song, oh. which is kind of neat. That's cool. Yeah. Why not? 
would do that if I already had that thing, I guess, maybe. Actually, to be honest, I just play a lot of Pandora on my Echo, so. <laughs> I can't believe you just use the built-in Echo speaker. I do. I do. It's just easier. I wonder. I wonder if you had a real speaker, if if you could go back, or if you're just one of those people who like doesn't care. Well, to be honest, I don't. The only time I use it for music is like when I'm cooking or when I'm doing other things where I'm not noticing the sound quality. Because really, the only good way to do it would be to get the dot, which is the small the puck, and plug it into a speaker. Um, mm -hmm. Which I thought about doing for the getting one for the bedroom because the other one's a little too far away. Um, but then you got to buy the speaker, mm -hmm. and I I'm not a big audio quality guy. Like I said though, the Echo speaker is terrible for podcasts and spoken word. It really does oh, a very poor That's job. Too bad. Like when I'm when I'm cooking or doing stuff, I can't because I, I have a different Bluetooth speaker. I can hear it on there. I can't hear it on the Echo at the same volume. It just doesn't project. Um spoken word very well that, that's my observation i was very unhappy about that so i almost never use it for podcasts kind of a waste in that respect okay uh we've got time to briefly talk about one more story um we've kind of talked about almost all of them we talk about amazon grocery stores or the apple car <laughs> project amazon's had grocery stores for a long time oh open actual grocery stores like physical dan like a real Grocery store. Dan, where do you Why? get your groceries? All over the place. Like I don't, I do don't care a, where I get my groceries Dan, from. Do you go to a? It depends bodega? what I'm getting. That's what it I know about New York City is they have bodegas. Yeah, we do have those, but not around me. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, it depends what I'm getting. If I'm just getting like, I don't know, commodity food supplies like stuff that comes in a can or milk or orange juice or bread uh stuff like that stuff i'm not really eating but like using for other things like lemons or things like that mm -hmm. i'll go to like a drugstore which is exactly one block away from me if it's like meat or fancy vegetables uh i'll go to whole foods what's which a is fancy like, vegetable i don't know I'm it's not like carrots like not carrots, but, like but if I was going to get... Do they make purple carrots? <laughs> they, they do. Like, what if I it? was to get, like, leeks or something, like something crazy that I needed to cook something, <laughs> I would go to Whole Foods. Fair enough. I'm fascinated by how people live in cities. So, I've never lived in one, so it's yeah, interesting. Yeah, you gotta to carry me. that shit back. Oh, that sounds yeah, awful. Yeah, city now? I hate... No, I live, <laughs> I live in Houston. You oh. drive everywhere. It's just a, a really large, dense suburb. It basically, if you walk in Houston, you have a death wish. That's because you will get run over. Um, right. So yeah, no, it's great. It's great. <laughs> it's really great. I live within walking distance of a supermarket, and I drive there. <laughs> I, I live maybe four blocks, five blocks from a supermarket. Mm. When I was in New Zealand, I saw an ingenious thing that I have not had the opportunity to really use yet. But it was a woman. She went to the grocery store. And she, as she was checking out, she asked for more plastic bags, which maybe back then, maybe even still, they didn't care how many plastic bags they gave you. Mm -hmm. And she tied them in a loop. She she strung the handles of all the other grocery bags along this like tied knot of other grocery bags, and then tied them in a loop, and then hung all of the grocery bags over her shoulders. And walk home that way. That's insane. Yeah, but it's great. Saves your like you don't have to have stuff in your hands. You can use your hands for things. Your your arms don't get tired. The plastic like doesn't dig into your hands. It was it was really ingenious. I'd like to see you try that, Dan. Sadly, I just bring like a a backpack. Uh, oh, that, that too. <laughs> Oh, it works. That's yeah. All, I can only get enough groceries that fit in my backpack. Maybe if I'm doing like something really ambitious for the weekend, I'll do a backpack and a bag mm. that I carry. But that's as far as I'll go. So now you know all about my grocery shopping habits. I don't understand at all why I would want to go to Amazon for any of these things. Because Amazon, I don't. When I think of Amazon, it doesn't give me any good kind of food connotations. You know, like Amazon is mass produced, quickly delivered. 
standardized crap. Like, that's what you get at Amazon. If you want, like, I just bought a toilet bowl brush on Amazon. I don't care. I don't give any crap about my toilet bowl brush. I just need a new <laughs> toilet bowl brush. Which, uh, which, which one did you get? I can tell you which one I got if you want to know. Because I got one I love. It's great. I'm pretty sure I, w- I did find out the Sweet Home had one. and then That was the one I bought. But then they were out of the first one, so I had to get their runner-up, more expensive one, the uh, OXO Good Grips Hideaway oh, Compact Toilet Brush. Whoa, big spender, OXO. Damn. <laughs> That's quality <laughs> shit right there. <laughs> Literally. Your toilet bowl is going to be sparkling. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, but so I do not have like positive associations for food with Amazon. Like I wouldn't go to Amazon grocery store to get leaks so let me suggest let's... why you might want to go to an amazon grocery store okay first of all the, the new story is that amazon is investigating potentially opening up grocery stores as part of their fresh grocery delivery service um they're also reportedly looking at drive drive in curbside locations where you can pick up your online deliveries um without having to go into a store Here's what would interest me. I think the biggest problem with online grocery delivery is that you don't get to pick out the food yourself, which I think is okay for boxed and canned items. I just don't think fresh items are ever going to... People are going to be comfortable with it, which is weird because I get HelloFresh in the mail and they actually give me really good stuff, so I don't know why I'm uncomfortable Mm -hmm. with it. Unless, yeah, unless they had like a freshness guarantee where they would... Because sometimes like for really weird fruits and stuff, like recipes like go to the grocery store and get a dragon fruit and i'm like i have no fucking idea what a dragon like how i'm I'm squeezing it i'm just i have no idea so yeah i would pay extra money and that is what hello fresh and blue apron and these things do to have someone make these expert choices for me but uh, yeah it doesn't seem like amazon's not in the business of doing bespoke custom things so here's where it gets interesting because what is amazon really a logistics company that's really let's be honest it's not that they sell stuff. It's that they ship stuff really well. A lot of people sell stuff. Nobody ships like Amazon. So imagine a service, a grocery store tailored to just what you need. If Amazon has enough data on the people who shop at a given store, they can make sure if Dan needs leaks, they can make sure they have leaks or the right amount of leaks, right? Because they know Dan wants them and Colby wants them and other people want them. Or maybe nobody wants them, so they don't stock leaks. A grocery store that's dynamically changing as customer needs change to make sure the products are fresh and up to date as they're needed rather than like a regular grocery store where stuff just sits because they just think everybody needs leaks. Well, no, it turns out only 10% of people need leaks, so you only need 10% of the amount or you don't need them every week or, you know, I'm just thinking like that's the advantage Amazon has is they're a really great logistics. They own... They own some of the best warehouses in the world. I don't know why you can't apply that model to a supermarket to guarantee things like freshness and availability, especially for either weird things or um, things like vegetables or meat that that go bad. I think Google would be a lot better at this because I often search for recipes before I make them, obviously, and often before I get the ingredients because I almost never have all the stuff I need. Oh, there you go. Hello Fresh on Demand. That's basically what you're describing is HelloFresh on demand yeah. where you where you plug in the and then you just get the box. You go to the Amazon grocery store and get the box with all the ingredients already in it. That's that would a good be cool. Idea. Amazon buy some recipe website. They own the content. They ship to product. I, I, I just think there are a lot of angles you can take. I'm, I'm glad Amazon tries stuff like this. I think it's really interesting. We've talked about before what an Amazon store might look like, just like a regular store. Um. And I'm glad to see them trying it. I do see people online who get fresh and seem to really like it. I, I haven't. I've got to see if they have it in Houston, because I would try it. Um, but I don't know what locations you can. You only get it in select cities still. Um, I was pretty thrilled to learn that they had. Um... Nope, not yet available in my area. <laughs> Dang. Aw, dang. Aw, dang. I guess I'll have to go to the grocery store like a chump. Shame on me. Uh, But we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Now, gentlemen, it is that time of the show. It's picks time. 
Mm. Mm, I know. What a surprise. It's not like we haven't done this before. <laughs> um, but I think we've got some, some good stuff in here I'm excited to look at. Starting with my pick, because I decided I want to go first. And uh, Minus Quick, it is an application for your iOS device. Um, Sarah, who here likes Saturday Night Live? Not me. Oh, oh. I do. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, Dan. Well, maybe there's a clip out there you might like, because uh, what I'm picking this week is the SNL Saturday Night Live app. It is a free app, and you can download it. And what's great about this is, as far as I understand, this is the only place in the world online that has every single clip mm. from the entire run of the series in a searchable database. I was, I've was i been watching the new episodes this year. It's the election year, and they do the parodies. It's been okay. It's been decent. Um, but it reminded me. Uh, no, this is how everyone describes I'm, SNL. That's okay. It's good enough. Like what the, why watch it? It's good enough. I don't. My TV cannot be good enough. It has to be better than anything else I could be doing at that moment. Uh, I think last week, not last week, two weekends ago with Lin Manuel Miranda was was oh he's great. Definitely the best thing you could have been watching. That guy's right so then. great. Like I knew okay. nothing about him, and he's great. But can I see that on YouTube? Is the question. But you can see it in the SNL app. This is what I, and actually you can see that. <laughs> actually, no, Dan, I will say this season and I think the last one or two seasons they do have on their YouTube channel. But mm. uh, you can see every clip, including old clips. That's what was great was I was watching the new season. I'm like, oh, remember when they did that bit? Or, oh, remember when they had that sketch? You can just search and it pulls it up. And I was finding all kinds of related clips I hadn't seen before. I'm just saying, if you like Saturday Night Live over its entire run and you want to go relive the clips, this is, as far as I understand it, the only way to see everything in a single place, and it's free. And there weren't even ads, which was weird. I don't know how they make money on this, but I guess they do somehow. So um, check it out, SNL. It is on iTunes for um, iPhone and iPad. I'm not sure if they have a an uh, Android version. You'd have to check, but I don't know because I don't have any Android devices. So that is my pick, and of course links to that and all the pick will be on the website. Um, Colby, let's take a look at uh, what you've got here. Sure. So uh, I just linked to the Sweet Homes article on picks for this, um, but my my pick is like bicycle lights. So uh, I ride my bike to and from work, but now this time of the year it starts getting darker earlier and earlier. So uh, it's it's uh, challenging to impossible to get home during daylight hours at this point. Um, but this the weather's still fine for. Uh, fine for riding. Um, so the solution to that problem is to get lights for your bike. Uh, and I use mine for the, fr I actually got them last year and I intended to use it. And then it got really cold and I just never did. Um, but I finally use them one year later for the first time t earlier tonight. Uh, and they worked pretty well. I didn't get hit by a car, which was cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I could see where I was going when I went through the park, which was very, very dark. Uh, and yeah, so if that's a, that's a problem you have, uh, I have last year's Sweet Home pick, which is different from this year's, but as far as I can tell, they seem to work fine. Um, as with most things, I, tr I trust their judgment. So Very yeah. cool. Gotta love that Sweet Home. Mm -hmm. Always cause, every time a new guide comes out, I end up spending money. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. Damn it. Uh, but gosh, it's so convenient. Very cool. Gotta stay safe on those streets. Um, Dan. Yeah. So keeping in my theme from last week of expensive, ordinary items that will last a long time. I've had this, uh, duffel bag from Filson. I got the duffel, the medium duffel from Filson. And, uh, it has like a lifetime guarantee. It feels super nice to use. It's super thick. I've taken it to other countries. I've thrown it on planes. I've thrown it in buses. I've thrown it in cars. Uh, it works great. I've gotten compliments on it. It's just a nice bag. And then, I don't know, it's, sometimes it's satisfying to have nice things you use all the time. So I'll be using it this weekend when I go to Washington, D.C. Uh, so check out the Filson Duffel Bag, conveniently named Duffel. That's a good, that's a good looking bag. Yeah. What, what color is uh, yours out of curiosity? Green? Green. Yes, the otter green, as they call it. I've yes. never seen a green otter, but okay. Um, 
That's a sweet bag. All right. Very cool. Perfect for our nation's capital. That's right. American made. Amer- Very good. That's how we that's how we like it here. Just like this program, American made. All right. <laughs> That is it. We are. We'll, ne- we'll never outsource this show, no matter how much uh, we might save in cost. No, because we are the classic, the original, and we are done for this week. That wraps us up, unless you guys have something else worth sharing. Nope. Well, before we get to the details on this show, I will do a mini plug for Up for Debate. We are Our new episode from last week is out, um, all about educational television programming you may remember such classics as the magic school bus bill Nye the science guy reading rainbow sesame street uh, we talk about all of it um and why uh some are more educational than others some are more fun than others um frankly i don't understand why those kids wanted to learn about science when they had a magic school bus but okay <laughs> you um, do literally anything yeah she their teacher is a witch let's be honest and she teaches them about science i don't get it but Anyway, we talk about it for an hour, and it's a lot of fun. That's at UpForDebate.tv. And a mini tease coming out tomorrow. We have a special bonus mini episode where Matt and I talk about baseball. He explains to me what an ERA is, because I st- and, he, and I still don't understand it, but okay. Um, and we talk about why the playoffs uh, should stay at a one-game wild card. And you may have your opinion, so you're going to want to look mm-hmm. for that on UpForDebate.tv. The best way to find out is to subscribe, and then you get the episodes when we publish them. Um, This show is Don't Panic at DontPanic.io. You can get all of our episodes, past, present, and future there. Audio, video, pics um, are all on that fantastically built website uh, that I just got an email, by the way, from Facebook telling me something is running out at the end of the month. Some API is dying at the end of the month. That's what they said last month. Oh, uh, they said October (laughs) 30th. I'm just letting you know. I think they're they're like just going around the horn of like they were emailing me for a while and then they emailed Dan... And then they sent. It, I mean, they didn't send it to me. They sent it to the Don't Panic account. I'm just telling you, they don't know I exist. Gotcha. For gotcha. good reason. Um, I'm just saying. But while the website still works, you can go there. Um, and of course, <laughs> all the links as to where you can follow and subscribe are there on most major podcast apps, um, and on iTunes, and of course at Don't Panic Show on Twitter. And as I mentioned, live Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, on Facebook, Facebook.com/slash Don't Panic Show. We will be back next week with even more, hopefully, more tech news. Um, we're, I know we're coming up on some announcements. I'm not crazy. I know in the next week or two there will be announcements. Um, I just don't know when or what. But you'll have to tune in to find out, won't you? Um, on behalf of Colby and Birthday Boy Dan, this is Sean thanking you for joining us, and hope we'll see you next time for even more tech news here on the Don't Panic Show.